if you're in Piha and you're going to go to the gap, you can at low tide you can scramble round the rocks and uh, walk across the sand. And if it's high tide, you need to go up and over the cliffs. But the track that went down to the gap uh, was the original road into Piha. There was no road access to Piha itself at that time. You might bring a horse down the track, but if it had been wet, you certainly couldn't get a gig or a cart down at all. So it'd be walking down, and if you walk down, you've got to walk back up. Well, as a child, I came out with my mother and then when I was about uh, 13, I came out with my godmother and we stayed on the campground to begin with and then down at Buddy Lucas's place down there. Do you remember that place? Yes, It was yes. a tiny little batch yes. then. And um, of course, your father was the ranger and we used to follow him round and see what he was up to and uh, go over to the Gap and all those things. 73 years of my life I've been a person of Piha. There were about nine, under nine, in the Piha school. Two brothers, one older and one younger. I hardly ever saw my brothers because they were out with the boys in the surf club. Well, my girlfriend and I were down on the beach in front of the surf club and we were getting the last of the rays of the sun. Then Peter and I think Murray Bray came down and said, would you girls like to come to a barbecue tonight? And we were staying at the Lion Rock cabins with my mother. Off we went to the barbecue and that was it. <laughs> I thought he was so gorgeous, really. <laughs> Peter and I married in 1963, so I've been a permanent resident ever since then. Peter was a member of the surf club and Peter was in fact the boat captain, wasn't he then? And um, he was the first New Zealander to make surfboards. Peter was a wonderful fan of surfing himself. He was a very good surfer. When Peter and I married, there were 72 people living in Piha. And then a year later, there were only 58 people living out here. And um, of course, the road was unsealed in those days and very arduous to get over, especially in the winter. The road came down here and then up to the tennis courts, there. Well, it was called the tennis courts here because of the, the flat marsh growth here. The reeds hadn't encroached so much. Peter's mother remembered coming up here with her sisters and playing, not as a proper tennis court of course because it's not very even, it's just that it was a flat area but you'd lose a lot of balls. Our grandfather John Byers, he used to come over here every day really when he was retired. He loved coming here and he'd quite often tend to the tracks and the beach and yeah it was a big part of his retired life. And because he'd been a ranger, he had a great rapport with visitors and he loved talking to them about the area. He'd bring over his rake and he'd take out all the weeds that were here and then this silly era would just spread and cover the ground properly. There was only just really a small fringe of, of 
reeds and flax at the edge and the rest was all this Saliera radicans, salt marsh plant. It needs the salt coming up from the sea. Peter was about 17 when this was caught, the kingfish, and he was very proud of it. But he always used to fish. Here he is as a young boy fishing at the gap. The cottage was there when Peter and I married and of course there was no electricity. So there was a coal range for cooking and a fireplace. There was running water. It was a, a very cosy, comfortable little cottage. Oh, it was yes. It was dear. Yes. Well, your mum used to tell me that she was making scones and pikelets and things. She was a great cook. Devonshire cream teas, really, weren't they? Just about. Yes. Um, wild berry jam and whipped cream mm. with a lovely cup of tea. This is Yvonne and her younger S sister Gladys. It's at the gap. My father came out when he was 19. He visited round there and lo and behold, there was a beautiful girl round there. And so, things flourished. Well, if you wanted to go Further on to the property, past the little cottage, you had to pay either threepence or sixpence. Depending on whether you're a child or an adult, to go and see the blowhole, the tennis courts, and further up still to get a view of the coastline. We'd sometimes come around to the gap in the big storm and quite often in this whole bay would just be foam, three, three foot high foam. We'd be burrowing through it as kids. We used to have a great time, whether it was the summer or the winter. You always had, you know, you knew that it was there. It was like a big playground. The Gap has always had a special place in our hearts. It had belonged to the family for so long and we just felt at home here. Now, of course, you'll remember, Andy, from the old photographs that this is where the cottage was. Yeah. And that's the Pahutakawa tree that Aunt Ivy planted all those years ago. And over here is where they had the cow shed. Oh, really? So they yeah. kept the cow for the milk and the cream for their Devonshire teas. Well, the beach is directly in front of us here. And to go to the blowhole, you'd go up behind that large Pahutakawa. You go up to the blowhole and, and it's just a day like today where the surf is quite small. You know that it's not going to be spectacular, don't mm. you? But if it was blowing a gale and the waves were large, you'd go up just to see how things were going the feature, on. The feature, mm. of them. And when there's a lot of foam in there, it just sort of heaves, doesn't it? Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, and billowing right up into the sky. Yes. And settling in the trees. Yes. yes. The radar station was up at the top of this steep hill, which we call Gentle Annie. And the people from the radar station would come down, along with members of the Usher family, to have swims in the blue pool during the summer and then a long, hot walk to go back again. There's so much to see in a small area that it is very much, you know, to be seen. So it's good that the parks actually have, have it now because it's going to allow a lot more people to be able to see it and enjoy it. <laughs> 